Hey guys, it's Mike Tarallo with Click. So this is video two in a multi-part series about the Click Business Glossary. In the last video, I introduced the Business Glossary and then also showed you how it works from a user perspective who does not have the steward role. In this video, I'm going to show you the additional options that are available to a user who does have the steward role and show you how to set that up. So we're going to do just a quick split screen so you can just see some comparisons. In the last video, I was logged in uh, using a session in Firefox with the user John Doe. And this user was a developer, for example, had access to certain spaces, but did not have the steward role. And then the other session in Chrome uh, logged in with Mike Tarallo is a tenant admin, also a developer, but does have the steward role. So if I click plus, which is the ability to create new content, you'll notice that the steward has the ability to create a glossary and import a glossary. Uh, quickly, just to talk about importing a glossary, we can also import from other systems such as Atlas and Atlan, but you also can export a click glossary and import a click glossary as well. So that's the difference here with the steward role. And then just for comparison purposes, you'll notice that those options are not available here. So as the admin, I'm going to go into the management console and I'm going to go to the users tab under governance, and we're going to select John Doe and we're going to edit the role. You will notice there's a new role called steward. So we're going to check that and save. So now user John Doe has that access. So from here, we're just going to now go into full screen into the John Doe session. And I'm just going to log out. And we're going to log back in. And now if I click on the add new button, we have the create glossary and import glossary options. Okay, so let's move over to the catalog. And now I'm in the do more with click space. Let's look at apps. And let's just open up a app that I have available here for sales analysis. And let's just pretend that we are standardizing on common language to use in the organization. And in the last video, you saw that I had terms for gross sales, total sales, net sales, all that stuff, uh, non-buyers. Now let's, for example, just look at um, one that we want to create here, you know, just called uh, return shipping to see, you know, what that entails. We're just going to go back to the hub and then I'm going to click add new, create glossary. Now we could have used the existing one already, but I just wanted to show you from scratch how this works. So you have a couple of different tabs and each tab has certain properties and settings. So for example, here, glossary details, the name of the glossary, we're just going to call this one sales analysis. And I'll just give it the tag of video uh, description used for defining terms for financial metrics or what have you. The space where you want it to exist, in this case, do more with click. And then the tags here, I'm just going to type in sales. And pretty much you can just put in anything here that you, you know you want to be able to search on later using the tags capability. Now the term template, you'll notice there's an edit button here. This allows you to do some styled formatting of additional context that can be related um, to the glossary. As you saw in the other example, uh, you know, I put a link in there and we can say, you know, go here for more information. and then highlight the link, paste it in, press enter. And now you have a link. You can even put a title, pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to really spend too much time on this and click save. Okay, so that's the term template. So the term template basically will include all of this information um, directly in the term. So every term that you create, you're gonna have this as default information. Now you could add more information to the specific term, but if you wanted like a default level or layer of context 
you can add that in the term template. Download glossary, once it's created, you have the ability to download it. It'll download it as a, a JSON file for you. And again, there's the details. Same thing with glossary overview. This is just a descriptive area to describe the glossary. And then you can start creating your terms. So you'll notice there's a create button here. So you can create term and category. So category basically just organizes the terms into the categories you create. So for example, in the last one we had um, metrics or measures. So maybe those are related to sales. And then we had non-buyers, for example, which was more dimensional information to describe uh, a type of buyer. So we can put that within like a customer's category if you wanted. So if I just wanted to create a category and we'll call this sales related another description, the steward. Now you could also give other people access to this by selecting um, their name from the list. If there was a parent category, which there aren't any at the moment, let me just click, click close. And then when you search, you can see that sales related category is there. When we create the term, we could also choose that category. So we're going to call this one return shipping. You can give it an abbreviation such as like RS. Now the status. Now, if you remember in the last video, John Doe was able to create a term. He wasn't able to create a glossary, but his term that was created uh, only goes into a draft state. It has to be approved by a steward. So here we could automatically select draft. In other words, if it's seen, it's considered that it's going to be used as an approved term verified, meaning that, you know, all of the decisions have been made to use it or deprecated, meaning, for example, it's not going to be used anymore. Um, so you might want to look at related terms. Uh, basically, it's just additional context that you could set up for the term that you create. So we're going to make this verified. And we're going to put in a definition. So within the definition, we're just going to type in the amount refunded to the customer for shipping costs applies to orders that have been canceled. And that's pretty much it. You're just putting context in for what you want to describe as return shipping. Now related information, you'll notice it uses the term template and you can put other things in there such as, for example, maybe you want to use the set analysis expression that's defined for that measure. So here for me, it's Basically, it's giving me the shipping amount where the cancel date is filled in, in this case here. So we can just put related information. Now, linked resources basically can be any of the data sets that use um, this particular field or measure. Uh, in this case here, I have uh, my Synalysis Analysis app. And then we also have data associated with this. So I add these as linked resources. And when they're added as linked resources, it basically enables you to go out to those uh, resources directly like you saw in the last video. I can go directly to the app or to the data set uh, that uses these particular fields or measures that are defined for it. Now, related terms is a little bit different. Um, this could be if there's additional terms that have been set up. We don't have those terms that have been set up uh, in this because this is a new glossary. So what I'm just going to do here is just open up the existing one that we have. So here under total where it's deprecated, if I click on this and open it, you can see related terms. If I click one, it'll allow me to choose other terms that have already been created and then assign a tag for information such as see also, it's a synonym, it's replaced by, is a preferred term defined by. So in this case, being that this one is deprecated for total, so the name of the field or the name of the value used is total, uh, it's deprecated. It's been replaced by total sales. Okay, so that's just an example of where related terms could be used. And then term stewards, you saw categories. We're just going to add the sales related, add that to the category. And then if we want to put any tags in here, and that's pretty much it. We just close this and now we have our term. 
Now, if you have a different view that you want to uh, view this in, you can look at it as a list view. You could also look at it in a hierarchical view. So based off of the categories and then the ones underneath. And just for completeness purposes, let's just go to something that's got a little bit more um, set up to it. I'm going to go to the insurance business glossary. And you can see here it's categorized now accident, automobile, homeowner, etc. There's the list view. And there's the tile view. I like the tile view personally. Okay, and that's basically setting up the term and the glossary. Okay, so let me know what you think. Put any questions or, or comments below and I'll do my best to respond. And be sure to check out these other great resources and I will see you on the next video. Take care.